Howdy folks, it's Micah Hood here, and I'm going to show you a, another patch that will break apart. And uh, I know that this patch specifically has a lot to it, so we'll kind of get started in the same way that we usually do. We'll do a little bit of a performance to get used to what the patch sounds like, and then we'll break it apart piece by piece, so that hopefully there's something that you can take away from it. So uh, let's dive right in. Cool, so we'll start there just as like a little example. First off, um, I use a lot of similar properties to the previous patch. In fact, you'll find a lot of similarities in the things that I choose to do with this specific setup. Um, mainly that we're looking at the sequencers, doing a lot of uh, triggering and affecting the envelope which is connected to the amp and things like that, the VCA. So all of that's pretty much um, the same, but just so we can do like a little quick overview, the output of the CV from the sequencer eight is going to our drum kit over here. And it's actually going to be affecting the uh, closed hi-hat and then we also have from the um, trigger point here on stage number eight of the sequencer 16. Um, that is also um, being used. If we kind of follow the pattern here. That's being used as the trigger for our um, little wow pad. Okay. So the standard stuff, you know, using that as a trigger point and then using the output of that into the VCA where we're putting Selena and we've tuned it so that it's all kind of appropriate. Now, um, that's all standard stuff um, that I usually do. Now, what isn't standard is what makes this patch really special for me, I think. The interesting parts of the patch, let's go ahead and turn our attention to over here, sequencer 8. What's happening with sequencer eight is uh, there is a mode in which sequencer eight has the mode CV that um, is creating kind of this uh, uh, semi-randomness that's going on here. 
and um, I have uh, duplicated um, the, well, actually, I've taken the um, output of um, sequencer eight here, and once it reaches stage number, uh, stage number five here, it goes into the clock of the beat divider, and then that output of the beat divider goes into mode CV. So anything that comes out of A, it's it's putting it into the mode CV and kind of uh, giving it um, this kind of uh, uh, random feeling, this random generation that's going on. And so um, then, apart from that, we also have the output B, which is going to our snare drum. So let's just take a look at just what all sequencer eight is controlling. So it's a really cool kind of random kind of percussion generation that's going on. And that's primarily what uh, Sequencer 8 is being used for here. And I've always found that putting things into mode CV has really helped with kind of the randomness factor of a patch. So maybe something useful for you. Um, that's the way that I use it anyway. There are multiple ways to use it, of course. But just for this patch, that's how I'm using it. Of course, everything's going into our mixer here. So we've got our percussion in number four. We've got our pad in number three. And then I think another thing that makes this patch really special is that the bass drum, the kick, is also being used as a bass because it's tuned in a particular key that is... Um, kind of aiding the bottom end of this IDM patch so that we don't have to depend upon oscillators. In fact, no oscillators are being used in this entire thing, just low frequency oscillators for control. We're not hearing them. All right. So like I normally do, I have the accent of the stages, the accented stages, outputting to our kick here. And then the kick to um, the output of that to a, a delay. And then we're taking the dry and the wet of the delay and putting them in two different channels. The wet is on number one. So we get that grainy kind of effect, which is really, really cool. That's the advantage of the lo-fi delay, I think, is we get that kind of graininess. So the wet is going into a one, and the dry signal, which is basically just the bass drum, right, at least right now, is going to our SV filter. And it's ever so slightly changing, because I have the first LFO affecting the CV, so that this is sweeping ever so slightly and ever so slowly. So it's very, you know, slight things like that really make a difference. What is interesting about this too, is that since most everything, including um, the, um, let's see here, this uh, output of percussion, because we have one output of percussion going to, uh, of the drum kit going to the fourth mixer, channel. We also have another output of that going to the delay, which since it's lo-fi delay, there are only so many signals that it can contain until it starts overloading, which I want to have those overloaded signals pop out every once in a while. That kind of lo-fi, uh, grainy, um, downgraded sampling sound that really happens every once in a while. It pops up um, how, how I'm also aiding that to happen, that kind of overloading to happen, is I'm taking the uh, kind of low noise, the CR out of the noise generator, and putting it into the CV of the delay. So we get 
the bass drum, we get the drum kit, and then along with all of that, we have this noise, uh, this noise generator, the low uh, frequency noise that's happening is going into the CV. And as we control the feedback, we'll get some of that graininess. Like there. Another way that we can do it is actually affect the pitch of the drum kit too, because if we affect the pitch of the drum kit, there is um, a way that the lo-fi kind of noise, the high pitchiness of that uh, uh, translating the sample, transposing the samples, comes through the delay. So another performative thing. I'm going to keep it right there for now, because that's really nice. Now another cool thing about this, as we're performing it, is that the bass drum, since it has that kind of uh, low end to it that sounds more like a, 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 a very big body bass sound. The decay, since I have um, turned the pitch decay off, I can control actually the pitch of the bass drum, the pitch of the bass drum, with this switch here, the decay. Right, so we can try and match that with Selena. I'm doing all of this without a keyboard, so I just want to work with my hands as much as I can. I feel like it's more, uh, no pun intended, tangible that way. So basically, in summation, what we've got is we've got the interesting points, just to sum it, sum it all up. The interesting points are that the sequencer 8 is being triggered into this kind of randomness via the mode CV. Now you can take any signal you want that's you know a trigger and put it into mode CV and create this kind of randomness. It's really, really cool. Another thing that's interesting about this is that we're overloading the delay to get that really interesting sound between the bass drum going in, the kit going in, and this lo-fi noise generator sound actually going into the control voltage of the delay. And we're getting ever so often these little glitchy overloads that come out. It's a nice little effect. Exactly, just like that. It's almost like it's generative. And that's kind of what we want whenever it comes to like IDM, intelligent dance music. Okay. All the while, we're using the kick as a bass and a trigger kind of keeping rhythm. Uh, that's coming from Sequencer 16. And then finally, we have our Selena that's being triggered by Sequencer 16 into the envelope and VCAs. And there's nothing hugely special or spectacular or special that's going on with Selena besides the fact that it's going through the Wasp filter and we can control wow. how much wow. Wow. we can open it up. Wow. We can also, uh, wow. in real time, control the attack, of course. Ow. 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 So we could change our arrangement just slightly, our sound. Bring in those hats.
And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, a little bit of an IDM patch for you just to see what's kind of uh, possible on the um, AE Modular uh, Starter Rack 2 with some added things like the Sequencer 16, the kick, the drum kit, um, a few other little things here and there. But um, by and large, one of the challenges for me was to just try and avoid using the oscillators, even though they sound great. The oscillators aren't all that there are. So um, we're using really the delay effect as a way to kind of create randomness as well as or, or lo-fi randomness and pop-outs. And then the sequencer 8 for this kind of sequenced randomness that triggers. So hopefully that's something you can use in the future. Hopefully it's something that you liked. If you really liked this video, give me a thumbs up, you know, recommend it to your friends. Subscribe to my page if you really like what you're hearing. Check out some of my other stuff. See you later.